バイリンガルウェブマガジンディッグ東京のディレクターを務めるカズーこと G カズオペニアです。英語力がどんどんつく学習法へようこそ。ディッグ東京は8つのカテゴリーのコラムを日本語と英語で併記しているウェブマガジンです。英語力がどんどんつく学習法は僕がこれまでの翻訳や通訳の仕事を通して培ったさまざまな英語上達についてのノウハウをレッスン形式にまとめたもので、読む、書く、聞く、話すという4つのスキルが身につくと思います。ディグ東京のビジネスやライフスタイルに関するコラムのテキストを用いるのでビジネスですぐに使える英語力や旅行や海外での生活に役立つ英会話力がつきますディグ東京のテキストと YouTube の動画を使ったこのレッスンを繰り返すことで大学受験のための英語力はもちろんのこと TOEIC、TOEFL、英検などの試験のための英語力もどんどんつくことでしょう同じコラムの日本語原稿を読み上げた動画シリーズ Readings for Japanese Study もありますので、興味のある方は動画の下の説明にリンクがあります。では、このレッスンの方法について説明します。まずは、DIG 東京のテキストのページと YouTube の動画をタブや別ウィンドウを使って両方ともすぐ見られる状態にしてください。そうしたら、DIG 東京の日本語のテキストだけをまず先に読んでください。次に、英語のテキストだけを読んでください。英語のテキストでわからない英単語や熟語をネット検索を使って自分で調べてみましょうもちろんわからない日本語があればそれもチェックしてください次に英語のテキストをもう一度読んでみてくださいこれで予習が終了ですここからこの動画によるレッスンを行いますこの YouTube の動画を再生させて英語を聞きながら DIG 東京の英語テキストを目読してください次に英語テキストを見ないでこの YouTube の動画だけを見ながら英語をよく聞いてください最後に YouTube の音声に合わせて英語テキストを音読してください以上のステップを繰り返すことで英語の表現力読解力ヒアリング力スピーキング力が確実に上達するはずです2回目以降のレッスンの際にはこの画面の下にある「もっと見る」を開いてテキストの朗読のところをクリックしてくださいすぐにテキスト本文を読み上げる部分に行けます。今回は Language and Ensembles 50 Americans have become numb to war What we can learn from the World War III hashtag SNS 英語術 on NHK e t e l e 僕が出演中の語学番組の最新回で取り上げたテーマ Hashtag World War III について振り返りました。楽しみながらレッスンしましょう。1 About our January 24th World War III episode. On the January 24th episode of Sekai e Hashin, SNS Ego Jutsu, we talked about hashtag World War III. On January 3rd, a United States drone strike near Baghdad International Airport killed Qasem Soleimani, the Iranian Major General of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. In the ensuing days, tensions rose between the US and Iran. And fears of an impending World War III resulted in hashtag World War III trending on Twitter. Looking at the hashtag World War III social media posts, it's clear that many of them were more concerned about being clever or ironic than about seriously addressing the issue. Many of the posts were accompanied by GIFs and other internet memes. Many will look at these posts and likely take the view that these users are ignorantly treating World War III like a joke. That their messing around is disrespectful to American soldiers who are currently in the Middle East or other field of battle. In this column, I will consider hashtag World War III and what it says about the mindset of Generation Z. 2. The US Draft. Hashtag World War III Draft was another hashtag that was trending alongside hashtag World War III on January 3rd. Widespread fears of a new draft led to a spike in people trying to access the Selective Service website, resulting in the website crashing. Many of the draft related tweets also take a jokey or ironic tone. Take these, for example, where users contemplate the ways they might be able to dodge the draft. In actuality, the US draft was abolished in 1973 as the Vietnam War was winding down. In 1980, however, following the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan, President Jimmy Carter reinstated the selective service system, requiring all males between 18 and 25 residing in America to register. If the draft itself was ever reinstated, people would be drafted from that list. 
Many American men register to the Selective Service Database when they apply for college financial aid. Failing to register can result in a five-year imprisonment or a $250,000 fine, but only 20 people have been prosecuted under the law since 1980. Instead, most people who fail to register end up having great difficulty obtaining financial aid and government benefits in the future. After the Selective Service website went back online, it tweeted the following. The Selective Service system is conducting business as usual. In the event that a national emergency necessitates a draft, Congress and the President would need to pass official legislation to authorize a draft. 3. Millennial Anxiety About the Draft Post-9-11 In terms of internet trends, World War III is not exactly new. World War III memes began appearing in April 2017, following rising tensions between U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. In the beginning of August 2017, President Trump strongly criticized North Korea for its nuclear program and threatened to unleash fire and fury if the country endangered the U.S. People then took to the internet to research and post about World War III and Armageddon. Going back even further, the nuclear arms race that took place following World War II made the threat of nuclear war feel realer than it had ever been before. Tensions were rising between the U.S. and the Soviet Union in what is called the Cold War, and the apprehension in the air was so great that many Americans even built nuclear fallout shelters in their backyards. The fear reached a critical moment with the Cuban Missile Crisis. Concern about the draft is also nothing new. Young generations have been concerned about the draft ever since President Jimmy Carter reinstated the Selective Service System in 1980. When the 9-11 attacks rocked the U.S. in 2001, the fear became so real that our history and civics teachers had to take time away from the curriculum to explain to us what it means to live under threat of war. That being said, it's true that 9-11 was a turning point of sorts when it came to fear of war in the draft. The reason is that 9-11 was the first time in U.S. history that mainland U.S. had suffered such a large-scale attack by a foreign adversary. It resulted in a wake-up call of sorts, the realization that Americans were no longer safe at home. Many of the students around me expressed concern that a draft was a very real possibility. 4. Digital Natives Have Become Numb to War People often talk about how Japan is experiencing heiwa boke, numb to peace. The idea that they become so accustomed to not being involved in any wars that the people have come to take peace for granted. If that is true, then perhaps we should say that the U.S. is experiencing senso boke. The people have become numb to war. Taking a step back, why does the U.S. always seem to be involved in an armed conflict somewhere? If, as President Donald Trump and many others say, the U.S. has the world's greatest military, equipped with the world's most advanced weaponry, why has the U.S. been unable to obtain a decisive victory in any war since the end of World War II, when it thoroughly defeated the Japanese? Maybe it's bad strategy, or maybe the idea of bringing democracy to other countries is futile to begin with. Maybe certain presidents have been hesitant to appear weak by withdrawing troops. All of these reasons may be true, but the main reason why America is always fighting a war is because it profits the military-industrial complex. The military-industrial complex is an informal alliance between the nation's military and the defense industry that supplies it. It exerts a powerful influence on public policy. The weapons made by the defense ministry are useless, stockpiled. They must be used. And if world peace were to actually happen, those companies would be out of business. As long as the military-industrial complex exists, the U.S. will always be fighting a war somewhere. And let's not forget everything that's been happening within the U.S. The Columbine High School massacre rocked the nation in 1999, and school shootings and mass shootings in general have been increasing every year since. The Gun Violence Archive has reported that there were 417 mass shootings in 2019, the highest on record. The GVA defines a mass shooting as where four or more people are shot, not including the shooter. Generation Z lives with the fear that a mass shooting can occur at any time, any place. Many have also started questioning the role of violent movies and video games in fostering a culture where mass shootings occur. 
While movies and video games are only part of the picture and do not in and of themselves lead to violent behavior, we must acknowledge the fact that they do numb us to violence and fear. We must acknowledge the fact that they do numb us to violence and war. Add on to that the fact that we are inundated with news and images about war and terrorism on a daily basis, and you can start to see why people would start to react to the prospect of war in odd ways. Taken in this light, the hashtag World War III posts are not so much a reflection of ignorance and disrespect as they are the product of a generation that has become numb to war. Internet memes are their escapist entertainment. Ijo, Language and Ensembles 50 Americans have become numb to war. What we can learn from the World War III hashtag. SNS Egojutsu on NHK E-Tele. No Ego Tekisto Rodok Shmashta. Ikaga de Staka? Kono contents ga kini itta ra, YouTube no kono doga no migi shite ni aru botan kara, channel toruk o zehi okonatte kudasai. Tekisto no saigo ni aru Facebook, Twitter, Instagram no icon kara, Dig Tokyo no koshi ki account ni hairi, follow shite kudasai. ご意見ご要望がありましたら YouTube や SNS のコメント欄にご記入ください。www.digtokyo.jp